This is Unit Three, Lecture One. Unit Three will be a two-lecture session. In Unit Three, Lecture One, we are going to cover some important topics. Example: DNA replication. And in DNA replication, we are going to talk about the DNA replication enzymes and their functions. DNA replication process in prokaryotes are our main goal. We'll talk about the DNA replication in E. coli, especially the replication initiation and replication termination. We'll also talk about the translation process and beginning of translation covers an important topic called tRNA charging and modification, and then finally protein synthesis in prokaryotes. Although protein synthesis in prokaryotes and eukaryotes are very, very, very similar, so we'll only focus on the protein synthesis in prokaryotes in this case. The number written after every single subtopic denotes the approximate number of questions you can expect from these subtopics in CSI NET exam. And I put this number based on the study of last 10 years question paper. So stay tuned and watch. So let's begin with this. So first of all, what we intend to talk here is the Watson and Crick DNA molecule implies a mechanism for replication. And that mechanism for replication states in three simple steps. The first is unwinding the DNA molecule. The second thing, separate the two strands from each other. And third, make a complementary copy of each strand. This is the, the idea provided by Watson Crick itself after knowing the structure and sequence of the DNA and how DNA base pairing is actually done. The, the idea that we know from Watson Crick pairing is that uh, the bases have complementarity. That means A pairs with T, G pairs with C. A pairs with T with two hydrogen bonds, G pairs with C with three hydrogen bonds. So they're complementary in nature. So if we, if we think about uh, one strand of the DNA from five prime, a, A, C, T, suppose, for example. So the opposite strand will be 3 prime, which will be complementary to the 5, and T, T, G, and C. That's going to be the sequence. So for, for a very basic understanding, if we just talk about it at, at a very basic level, you know, there are two strands of the DNA, like a ladder. So when we intend to replicate the strand of the DNA, definitely replication means you're copying making a copy of one existing DNA into two. So obviously we need to separate the strands, otherwise you cannot do that. So we do that at the beginning, unwinding the DNA molecule. So unwinding the DNA molecule is required because we, we are talking about eukaryotes. We know that DNA is wrapped around histone. We just discussed about that in the last class. DNA is wrapped around histone and we need to open that DNA. We need to unwrap the DNA from the histone. So once unwinding of the DNA molecule is done, because you know inside the cell DNA is condensed, so we unwind it, then it comes down to the separation of the DNA strands from each other. So without separating the DNA strands, we cannot utilize one of the DNA strands as a template, because that gives us the third important step, make a complementary copy of each strand. That means when we separate the DNA strands, each of the strands act as a template DNA. Template means it's something uh, onto which the replica will be made. But using uh, the structure we are making the replica. That's what the template DNA, and that's how we make it. So here we want to talk about the mode of DNA replication that is available. And the, there are three separate models for that. Conservative model, semi-conservative model, and dispersive model. Well, conservative model states that the parental DNA is denoted here with the red color, the new generation DNA with blue color. So parental DNA remains as it is and a totally new DNA is formed where both the strands are new. The parental DNA keep both its old parental strand. Now this idea is totally faulty because if you know the Watson Creek pairing, we know that one of the strands, when after the separation, those strands should work as template that allows the synthesis of another new strand. So this is not possible. So we, we, we just throw it into the garbage. which is not possible in the beginning. Now we have the semi-conservative model, which is mostly backed by the Watson Creek type of pairing, the complementary feature of the DNA. It says that uh, both the strands are separated and both of those strands are used as a template DNA to produce a new strand. So in the first generation after the replication, we have two DNA from one and in those two DNA, each strand among those two strands, one strand is old parental, the other strand is new daughter. So the new generation here 
contains hybrid strains one from the old parental one from the new now this is known as semi conservative model because in this case the parental dna is not totally conserved like this first one because in this case the parental dna is totally conserved here the parental dna is not conserved only one strand of the parental dna is conserved and one new strand is synthesized so we call it semi conservative model of dna replication now this is kind of really a possibility based on our idea of what's in pk and the third one is dispersive model and this dispersive model states that the parental dna and there is no single strand utilized as a template in this case uh, the template is scattered is fragmented and the new generation of the dna which are produced are produced by this mosaic fragments of the old as well as newly synthesized strands so if you look at this dna both of this dna almost look identical because they carry few portions of their old parental dna few portions of their uh, newly synthesized dna all scattered in both the strands so that is dispersive model so now we need to find a way to understand which among these three models are the best suited model uh, to be called as the dna replication process so the the easiest option uh, there are tons of experiments done but the best experiment which actually proves that the dna replication is semi conservative not conservative neither uh, dispersed and that experiment is known as meselson and stall experiment now in meselson and stall experiment what